But we're going to learn what engineers do in the next three days. And what engineers do is they learn some scientific principle. And when they understand the scientific principle, then they get into a team and they discuss it to try to solve some sort of problem. And we've come up a pro with a problem for you guys to solve. And so after you learn the scientific principles, if you listen carefully and apply those scientific principles, you are able to design and build a water wheel that will solve the problem that we have for you. And we'll tell you about that a little bit later on. So before we get into uh, water wheels, I want to start with windmills because we're probably a little bit more familiar with windmills. Who's seen a windmill recently? Everybody. Where'd, where'd you see a windmill? Yeah. Oh, like, I have like this neighbor and they have like this kind of little tiny one. Yeah, a little tiny one. Where'd you see one? California. On the way to California? Going to Disneyland? Yeah. Everybody's seen that. What 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 does that windmill do? How does it do that? It's, it's just so you got somebody up there just spinning it? No, the wind spins it. Oh the wind spins it. Oh. Well where's the wind come from? The pressure. Oh, yeah. pressure. pressure. Wind comes from high pressure to low pressure. And so they pick places where there's a lot of pre pressure differences, and that hilltop in California happens to be one of them where there's a lot of wind. What happens if the wind stops? Then the, wind stops. Stops. the windmill stops, right? So windmills can take wind energy, that is, air moving from high pressure to low pressure, and it converts it into electrical energy. Well, several hundred years ago, there was no electricity, right? How'd you like to be living a couple hundred years ago without electricity? Not so much, huh? Matter of fact, how'd you like to go to school, to college, without a personal computer? Without a calculator? Would you like to go to college without a calculator? No. All of us did. <laughs> we went to college and they didn't have calculators, man. We had a slide rule, which is a mechanical device that you have to multiply, add, divide, do cosines and sine, all the trigonometry functions. It was horrible. Let me tell you, it was horrible. I never want to go back to that. When, we, when I got out of school, right after I got out of school, about a year later, they came out with the first calculator and we were in awe. Because electronics and electricity did so much for us. Well, several hundred years ago, there wasn't any electricity. So they couldn't make windmills that generate electricity. But some engineers were sitting around, and they knew some principles about science, which we're going to get into. And they said, we need to invent something that's going to help us do some work. So they came up with water wheels and water mills. And I'll tell you why they're mills in a second. And it's very, very simple. It's just a big wheel that they put blades on, and then they run water over it. And when they run water over it, the wheel turns, just exactly like the wind, right? <laughs> yeah. And as long as the water's flowing, the water it'll, the keep, water it'll keep doing it. So they said, OK, we can do this. We can make this spin. But we can do many different things with it, OK? And these are the things that they started coming up with. Not every engineer came up with the same idea. All engineers came up with different ideas. They came up and said, hey, we can make grist mills or corn mills. And I'm going to talk about that in just a second, show you how that works. Some of them said, OK, let's make some sawmills. We need some sawmills. And some other guys said, we need some cotton mills to make clothes. So everybody came up with a different idea. And there were mills all over the place because they were making stuff. So, but one of the very first ones that came out was a grist mill or flour mill or corn mill. So now let's go back a thousand years. And you had your little family, and it was time for dinner. And your mother said, let's fix some cornbread. Mm. How did they make cornbread like thousands of years ago? They used rocks and grinded up the corn. Right. So your mother would say, we're going to have cornbread tonight. Here's a rock. Here's some corn. Go out there and mash it, right? So, so you'd be out there mashing up some corn, and you make some cornmeal, and then she'd bake it, and you'd have cornbread. And if you had a family of how many's in your family? Four. So you could mash up corn for four people, right? Not so big deal. But then time rolled on, and we had cities. And cities had a couple of hundred people in it, a couple of thousand people in it. 
What if everybody went to the restaurant that night and decided to have cornbread? How much would you have to pound out? A lot. A lot. A lot. How many people would have to do that? So not so. Hundreds, right? Just that. So the engineer said, here's a problem. We need to solve this problem. So they came up with a water mill with a grist grinding in. So here's what they did is they, they took this wheel, here's the water wheel, and they put paddles on it, and they put it under some water that's flowing. And then they attached that water wheel to an axle. So now this axle's turning in the same direction. Now we want to change the direction of our force. So they put a big wheel at the other end, and they pounded wood pegs all the way around that wheel. Okay? Got it? So it's spinning around. Then they said, okay, let's put another little wheel right here, and we'll put slots in it all the way around in a circle. And we'll just move that right into there. So now that slot just keeps turning that, and now we'll attach that to an axle, and it goes up this way. So then they took two big stones. They took a big stone and they set it on the floor of this little building. How big a stone do you think they got? The size of these two desks. Size of those two desks? Bigger than the smart board. Oh, dang. Maybe as big as this room, maybe half as big as this room. Because they needed a big stone. So how much does that stone weigh? Oh Thousands of pounds, right? So they just set that big stone on the ground and they cut some grooves in it. These engineers were having fun. They said, okay, now we've got to get another big stone and set it on top of that. So they took another big stone and they set it on top of that. They drilled a hole down through this and they attached this axle to this top stone. Okay? Now this top stone is turning. And we'll talk about force multiplier after a while. But this stone is turning real slowly, but it's still turning, okay? And then they poured corn in at the top, and as the stone was turning, what would it do to the corn? Right. It would just grind it up into cornmeal, right? And it would slide out the side. And how much do you think they could do in a day? A lot. A lot, right? Could feed a whole town in a day, right? Yeah. How much did it cost them to do this? A lot. A lot. A thousand, maybe two thousand. Well, how much did it cost to make? Once they built the building, how much did it cost to run this? Not, not, not much, right? Because they, they got the water's free, right? As long as the water was flowing. So some other engineers were sitting around going, you know, those guys did the corn, corn things. What else can we do? So some other engineers came around and says, you know what? I want to use that water mill to crush some things. I want to crush rock. Why? Why would these guys sit there and say, I want to crush rock? So you can make it into metal and iron? Extract some metal or iron? What kind of metal were they looking for? Gold. Gold would be a good one. What kind of metal were they looking for in Arizona? Copper. Copper, right? So they got these big rocks, and there's little bits of metal in there, and they got to crush that rock down, right? So these engineers said, let's take a water wheel, only let's not put other wheels and everything on it. Let's get some rods. See these big long rods here? And we'll attach at the bottom a big heavy weight. Maybe it's another stone, maybe it's a big piece of heavy metal or whatever. And on this rod, we'll put a little, a little lever. And then on our axle that comes out of our water wheel, we'll put a little knock here. Now this wheel is turning with the water wheel, right? So as it turns, it catches this little knob and it lifts it up in the air. See how that lifts up in the air? And then when it clears, it just drops it because there's a big heavy weight at the bottom, right? And then it comes around to do that again. So this rod is doing this, right? It's lifting up, drop, lift it up, drop. It. So it's doing that, right? Then they put about 10 or 11 across there. So now you got all these guys doing this, right? So then they just shove the, the rock underneath there. And as it went by, it just crush it. Just break it up into small pieces. And you can make this go real slow and you get it really crushed in the spine stuff, or you can make it go a little faster and get it bigger. So engineers would do that. And how do you think they got this belt to move? Water wheel. Another water wheel, right? Yeah. So they just kept doing it. So these engineers are pretty smart, right? They're going, hey, that's cool. I like that. I'm good. So some other engineers were sitting around saying, you know what? 
Those guys are baking bread over there. Those guys are crushing stone. I want to build a house. How would they build the houses before water wheels? Mud huts. Mud huts? What, what were the pioneers doing? Log cabins, right? So how do you build a log cabin? Wood. Cut down. Cut down. Wood with what? An axe. And then what do you do? Put it on the water. How many want how many want to build a log cabin? Lifting logs all day. How many want to? I think I'd go for the cornmeal, right? <laughs> so that's heavy, heavy work. So some engineers came along and said, let's build a sawmill. And they said, we're going to do it different. We're going to still use a water wheel. We're still going to run water across it to make, um, to make, is this a smart board? I keep touching. We'll make this go around, but this time we'll take an armature and we'll just attach it to the water wheel. And then we'll put a little pin up here and we'll attach it to this saw blade. So now when the water wheel is going around, this saw blade is going up and down, up and down, up and down. And then if we just take a log and we pass it by here, we can cut off a two by four. Right? And then we can take the log back and we can pass it through there again, pass another two by four. And what can we build with two by fours? Uh, houses. houses. You ever seen a, a house around here with it just partially built with all the? That's a lot of two by fours, right? Yeah. You sure wouldn't want to do that by hand. So these engineers built a lumber mill. Now lumber mills use this exact same thing today. They've gotten rid of the water, maybe because they got a, we've invented electricity, but it's still done the same way. 